This is going to be a follow-up to my original Roquan Smith film study video, which came out Monday evening. Uh, this is kind of a shout-out to those people that are having a conversation about Roquan Smith's coverage skills. So I'll try not to make up my mind on something until I kind of look at it myself. You know, there's some weakness in that. There's some strengths in that. Uh, I refuse to allow other people to tell me what to think about someone. I'm not just going to look up data and accept it. Having said that, there is some strength in that uh, approach as well. You know, looking up what other people think who have maybe spent more time than you have, you know, watching the film and hopefully they've done their due diligence. So I had about uh, 40 pass plays from Roquan Smith in 2022 and was able to break them down, show the coverages. Before we start, um, I do want to tell you this. The Bears asked him to do a lot of different techniques and coverage. And I think that tells us a little bit about what they thought about his coverage skills. Let me put it to you this way. If someone is, let's say, let's start here. If someone is terrible in coverage, I don't think they're going to be asked to execute five, six, seven different coverages. Because presumably they're going to be bad at all of them. And, and they're actually going to be worse at all of them because they're not practicing and executing one or two or three core concepts repeatedly. In my opinion, you don't ask someone to do something. You don't ask someone to do six different things if they're not good at all of them. He looks good at all of them. Like, does he look elite? Does he look top five, top ten? Like, I'll leave those BS designations for other people. He's competent to good to very good in every coverage I see him in. I'll show you some interceptions here in the beginning. I will show you him being isolated against Cobb from Green Bay in week uh, two. I think week two. So they kind of took advantage of the man coverage the Bears were playing. So give Aaron Rodgers credit. Give the Packers coaching staff credit. They put a receiver in the backfield and got a receiver isolated on linebacker. Okay, fine. Roquan Smith still made the tackle. It ended up being a first down. I think he looks good. I don't really have concerns, for real. And I'll show you the film and let you make up your own mind and let me know what you think in the comment section. The first three plays here are going to be interceptions from 2022 and, and then one from last year. And I'm, I'm using these to make a point. Interceptions sometimes are a little bit random. They're, yes, they can be a product of playing good coverage and having good leverage skills, right? You can see Roquan Smith here on the left-hand side into the boundary. By the way, this is generally where Patrick Queen plays, into the boundary away from the nickel defender, but he often does play to the side of the nickel defender as well. So it's not like Roquan Smith's going to be unfamiliar. And the multitude of coverages he's asked to play, to me, illustrates that he's capable of playing multiple things. The ball's tipped here. And Roquan Smith, you can see he's in good relationship already, breaking on the ball. Probably, maybe not. Maybe he's not going to intercept it, but he's going to get there pretty close to being able to intercept it. In this case, easy interception. When I say they're random, what I mean is he was in the right spot. He was breaking on the ball, had good leverage, but a teammate was able to knock the ball up in the air and give him an easy pick. If you only rely on interceptions as your barometer, as your judgment for if someone can play coverage, then you just don't know what you're talking about. That's just a fact. And I'm sorry if you, that bothers you. It's way more than interceptions. Sometimes in zone coverage, you cover so well that the quarterback doesn't throw it to that area. So you don't get as many opportunities for an interception. I'm not saying that's what happens to Roquan Smith here, but I'm saying your opportunities for interceptions could be minimized because you're covering well in zone. Here in this case, another tipped ball by a defensive lineman for the Bears up in the air. And Roquan Smith's got high-level awareness and oftentimes is able to keep his eyes on the quarterback and then glance back and forth to the receiver. He does something that Patrick Queen does not do naturally, or at least, let me rephrase that, has not done naturally. Over the years, he looks at the receiver. He'll do what I call ping-pong eyes. He'll look between the receiver and the quarterback multiple times. Now, this is a great pick. Undercutting from the opposite side of the field. Now, this is not a, a flood concept, but the Bengals are flooding the trip side of the field. And the backside inside linebacker, which is Roquan Smith, they're, they're kind of trying to make it look like man, but 
believe me, Joe Burrow knows it's not man. When you got a linebacker here lined up over Boyd, it's a third and four. So it's a great play by Roquan Smith. Undercutting, you know, the, the targeted receiver from Joe Burrow, awesome. But let's take a look just for a second, and you get the end zone angle too. Watch his helmet as the ball is snapped. He sees the running back release horizontally, meaning to the flats. He knows someone else has got him. He's not going to chase that. He's going to look for something to settle under. He's aware that there is a route developing behind him. He's reading Joe Burrow's eyes and direction of shoulders and, and face mask for where the ball is going to be thrown. And you'll see a little bit better. Um, you'll have a little bit better of angle of that when we see the end zone angle. It's a pick six. Looks pretty good. Looks kind of familiar to me. I don't know who you guys think that might look familiar to running down the left sideline. It's trips with the running back to that side. So the running back, as soon as the running back releases horizontally, look at his head. Look at his face mask. That's important. He's not just being manipulated by the quarterback. Those people who say, you know, he bites on play action hard. Well, I said in my initial film study video that there was some truth to that. I agree. But that doesn't mean someone isn't good in coverage. You know who doesn't bite on play action? and get beat a lot, I'll give you one guess, and I'll let you figure it out in the comment section. It's a linebacker who plays for the Ravens, all right? This is a great play. It's not just the pick, the hands, the undercut, but it's the use of his eyes. You have a helmet on. That helmet restricts your view from like a, we would always say it was like a 35, 40 degree angle, something like that, maybe a little less. You got to use it. You got to turn your helmet and look. And he looks, I think he does exquisite film study. I do. I said that in the initial film study or video that I put out. I think he does unbelievable film study, him or other people around him. And I think he has awareness of the routes that should be developing. Okay, 2022 film, not interceptions. Okay, these are all going to be generally third downs from week one and week two. I think I showed you guys film of him against the run for the most part in week six and week seven. So this is going to be week one and week two, third downs, pass coverage. He's in man here. This is the first down. It's not to his guy. He's in man on the tight end. So we'll see a number of techniques that he plays. Third and seven, so they get the first down. We'll see a number of techniques that he plays. You know, it's man, so they're clearing out this open area, which is, you know, it's where Roquan Smith lined up. I'm not a huge man guy with my inside linebackers. Kind of for this reason here. You know, that it just opens up the area where you had a player standing initially. It's a simplistic way of looking at it, I know. It's against Kyler Gordon, the rookie, who's given up, you know, a lot of yards, at least early in the season in terms of pass plays. All right, playing man again, and he is physical. I don't know who this 85 is, but he's a big-ass tight end for the Packers. Roquan Smith is a bull. I mean, they're fighting. First of all, it's a great, it's a great throw by Aaron Rodgers, you know, to the running back Jones. But these two are fighting this out. I love it. I don't know about you, but that that is what my brain and my gut and my heart tells me football is. It's two guys being physical, two bulls button heads, trying to find some separation if you're the tight end. Trying to stay in his face if you're Roquan Smith. Well, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of all the popular sayings that people put out there. But you watch that, and you say he's a dog. All right, zone coverage. I think this is Smith here. Aaron Rodgers' initial read is going to take him to the other side of the field. He tries to come back here. So he tries to come back to the two receiver side. Smith is sitting in front of this curl, so Rodgers doesn't like it, and then his running back is on the ground, so he really doesn't have many options. Smith comes forward. He is aggressive. You know, maybe Rodgers could sneak this ball, you know, more towards the middle of the field to that guy running the curl, but the pass rush gets there. That's part of the idea behind saying that Roquan Smith is very intelligent, that he's very aware. I think he understands the rush. I think he understands – how much time he's got to play defense for. Okay, now we're going to get a little bit more multiple. You've seen some man. You've seen a little bit of zone right there. 
Now we got cover three, but he's he's not playing the hash. He's playing the flats. Now you may not like me me calling this cover three, but it's third and ten. So the, the yard to make is here. It's the 49. So I'm saying to you, this guy's playing deep thirds. This guy's playing deep thirds. You got a middle third safety. He's dropping down to play the hash here, he being the safety. And then Roquan Smith is dropping out to the flats. That's multiple. It's not, it's not a ton of inside linebackers that are asked to do that. I mean, the Sam in a 4-3 is asked to do it. You know, the Ravens are doing that a lot with their with what they call their SAM, their nine technique to the boundary. You get a little bit better idea of, of the there's the four under umbrella. Deep third, deep third, deep third. You know, maybe it's a cover three match philosophy, but in any case, Roquan Smith is definitely playing the flats. Asked to do a little bit more than people give the uh impression in terms of how many different things he's asked to do. He's going to be manipulated here. This is a third and eight. This is the Packers' fourth possession. And it's going to be man, and he's on Cobb. Bad matchup. Just a bad matchup for any inside linebacker, I would think, right? It's the little shake, so there's just too much space. You know, He's got a two-way go. He's got a two-way go out here to the flats, put his foot in the ground, cross Roquan Smith's face. He's got a two-way go. That's very... Difficult for an inside linebacker to cover. He does make the tackle. Randall Cobb gets up and celebrates. I mean, congratulations. You had a you had a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You're a wide receiver against an inside linebacker with the entire width of the field to use. I'm not surprised that they won that matchup. I don't know a single inside linebacker throughout history that covers that. I mean, that stops it nine times out of ten. You know, five times out of ten? Okay, fine. I'll give you that. I feel like he played it pretty well. That's my point. You can let me know if you agree or disagree. That was week two coverage, Roquan Smith on third downs against the Packers. Here's week one coverage against the 49ers. This is a third and seven, 49ers second possession from the 29-yard line. So going in to score. And the thing I want to point out is not really, you know, the sack or, or whatever. The thing I want to point out and really talk a lot about is, is his helmet. Okay, he's got pass. Obviously, it's empty. Looks to his left. Got a receiver cutting in left, so he tries to, tries to cut off that angle. And then, you know, sees the quarterback start to look over this way, and he starts to move. Yeah, he's moving with the quarterback's eyes, but I think he's got tremendous awareness of the routes. I said something in my initial film study video that I'm going to, I'm going to stand on, I'm going to double down on. As athletic, explosive, and agile, actually more agile than Patrick Queen, but just as aware, intelligent, and savvy as Josh Bynes. I think it's going to be a unique thing, this group. I'm not going to back down from my statement that I think that um, he, him and Marcus Williams on the field together will be like adding, will be like playing with 12 players because of their awareness. All right, third drive, third and three. I think they're playing man free here, and I think him and Brisker are, I think Brisker believes they're going to switch it. So, Watch the pre-snap communication between Brisker and Smith. Brisker is pointing to something. Maybe he's pointing to Smith. It ends up working out like man, where Smith has the running back man and Brisker has this guy man. Now, it doesn't look like man down up, you know, in terms of Brisker because he's allowing him to cross his face. But you definitely have man here. You definitely have man here. Definitely a man here. So it just looks like to me it's a blown coverage over here that Brisker thinks they're going to switch and Smith doesn't switch. Meaning you get one guy running in and then the running back going to the flats and Smith plays this like man. Brisker plays it like they're going to switch it. I think Brisker even starts to maybe do a hand signal or motion pre-snap to Smith, kind of trying to tell him, to look for the switch right there. I'm not sure. You know, we have no idea what he's communicating, obviously. Smith was looking at him. Smith plays like man. Brisker plays it like zone. It ends up being an incomplete. Do I think Smith messed it up? I have no idea. All right, quarter, quarter, half, and there is Smith. This is a third and 13 on the 49ers' fifth possession. 
they're going to play quarter, quarter, half, half to the top side of the field with Brisker. There's your half. Quarter here. Quarter here. Some people call it cover six. That's fine, too. Roquan Smith was lined up at the line of scrimmage with the other inside linebacker. They're going to peel out. Watch 53 peel out and have no awareness that this is QB draw. Smith at least has awareness of it. He doesn't make the tackle. I think maybe he gets involved at the end. But 53 is getting out of there so heavy because he, you know he's got trips to deal with. So he's got to be a part of that coverage element. He's got to be the fourth guy covering four over three. Smith maybe has a little bit more awareness or maybe has a little less coverage responsibility on this play, and that's why he's able to uh, not be turned around so much and unaware of it. All right, we're going to get into a little bit more of the multiplicity. There's a Tampa 2 on a third and nine. We'll let it run a couple times, let you see it. It's a completion to the backside of the uh, formation, to the running back. But here's Smith, and he's going to run vertical with one of these routes from the bunch. But he's got to sift that out first. It ends up being, I think, the point man running vertical. And the inside guy runs, I think, this little whip route or China in. I think he's doing a nice job there. Watch his helmet as the play starts. Looking at the receivers, looking back at the quarterback real quick to see if the quarterback was looking at him, but still moving backwards, not leveling off when he looks at the quarterback. That's important. He can continue moving away from the direction he's looking at, staying on his leverage side. I think he's pretty damn good in coverage. You guys can let me know what you think. Uh, you may have some information or some data that's, you know, he's been targeted this many times and he's given up this many yards. I'm, gonna, I'm here to tell you, some of the people that are going through those coverages don't know what the hell they're talking about. Because, like, and I, lo I love Ahmad Gardner. I do. But he's been involved with three touchdowns this year that have not been attributed to him in terms of coverage. There is no way for PFF to know what the split field coverage call was. Just unless the Jets are sharing their coverage calls with them, which they're not. All right, here is Smith. This is a third and six. This is a blown coverage down here at the bottom side of the field. Um, I think it's Kyler Gordon again. But I like his awareness. His being Roquan Smith. He's got a receiver developing to his right, a route developing to his left, and one flashing underneath of him. Pull this back. So you can look at his helmet, and you can you can look at the relationship that he tries to hold with all three of these routes. I think we've got a very aware football player. I think we've got a guy who just understands where he's supposed to be leverage-wise. You can see he's looking at the route from the other side, drifting. I love what he appears to be doing in multiple coverages. I showed you some man-to-man. -man. Showed you him playing cover three, the flats in cover three which is normally played by like a drop end or a strong safety rolling down. Showed you a Tampa 2. Again, showed you some man. Showed you him playing the hash some, like that last play there, quarter, quarter, half, which is you know essentially zone for him. This is the last play I'm going to show you, and if you're not impressed by this play, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, there's another D lineman involved in the play in terms of the sack. Roquan Smith is, he's not covering. He's destroying 44. Right? We know him well. He's destroying, he's manhandling him. And then in the midst of doing that, he's got his eyes on the, on the backfield and sees that the quarterback is trying to escape. And he's got the awareness to go ahead. He got a half a sack for that, okay? That was a, that was a split sack between him and this defensive end. I don't know. Is is are you as impressed with that play as I am? That's a unique thing, I think, to be able. Well, first of all, to be able to overpower. I don't even know how to say his name now. It's been so many years since he played for the Ravens. To be able to overpower him and just knock the crap out of him in terms of his route, and then to be under such control while doing that that he can keep his eyes in the backfield, redirect and dive in there like a madman to get a half sack. If he can't play, 
inside linebacker for us at a really high level, I'll be surprised. If, if, if there's not an impact, and I don't mean like, you know, all of a sudden we're going to be a shutdown defense, only give up six points a game. No, we're going to we're gonna give up points. We're, we're playing against some damn good offense as well, you know, at least in the beginning part of the season, definitely. He's going to have an impact for us. His awareness level, he looks to me like a guy who can play multiple coverages. This does not look like someone who's not good in pass coverage to me. Uh, maybe my eyes aren't as experienced as others. I like what I see. I didn't cherry pick these guys. I went and grabbed a bunch of third downs from week one and two intentionally because I, in the first film study of him, I showed you uh, run plays, excuse me, from week six and seven. So I wanted to balance that out. And plus, for the offseason, if he stays with the Ravens, which hopefully he does, I wanted to have a balance of plays to access later. I put them in the database. They're labeled, boom, sitting there waiting on me to do the next film study on Roquan Smith, which is hopefully after we win a Super Bowl or after he makes some great plays here during the regular season or after he resigns with us in the offseason, right? I don't see a guy who can't cover. Like, that's this t- the title of this video, even when I typed it, because I, I pretty much knew what I was going to say by the time I started to record this video. I have watched the plays like three times each. The title's ridiculous. Sometimes sometimes they're intentionally ridiculous. Sometimes I'm trying to be a little bit sneaky, right? But this one is, is really tongue-in-cheek. Yes, Raquan Smith can cover. Is he a shutdown inside linebacker covering? I don't know, man. I mean, what is he elite? I don't know, man. I mean, apply those statements. Apply those words as you wish. Whatever statement you want to use, I think it applies to Roquan Smith. The guy can cover. He can play man on a tight end. He's physical as hell with tight ends and fullbacks where he has the opportunity. I mean, did you see what he did to the Packers tight end? Did you see what he just did to 44 for the 49ers? Then he's under control enough to be able to dislodge those guys or disengage and get to the quarterback and make a half sack. I'm very impressed. Um, I don't see our current inside linebackers playing like this. And in fact, you know, since I've really started watching the Ravens intently with a, an analytical mind or trying to at least, hopefully I can do that for you guys. I don't know how to describe it other than to say he's got Josh Bynes' awareness and intelligence level along with Patrick Queen's athletic ability, but even – you know, a little bit, a little bit further than that. Just he's got a physicality that Queen doesn't have. He's got a physicality that that Bynes kind of has, but even more so, because like when he hits people in the past game, like you saw, they stop. Their forward momentum is is impacted. I'm a big fan. I think this was a great move, especially for the salary impact this year. It it actually did allow us the opportunity to make another move because of the salary. I think that's why they did it. I think that was. I think that was the holdout between them and the Bears was the salary piece. And then the Bears probably said, well, we'll do the salary piece, but you've got to do a second round pick or, you know, that uh, was it a fifth. The the second, the other piece was a fifth. So I think that was what was brilliant about it. Is it, is it salary wise? It has zero impact, but it doesn't matter now because, you know, the trade trade deadline is over. So I think it's a great signing. I think it's a, a great player. Great future, hopefully with the Ravens. That'd be amazing. You know, maybe if it turns out to be a rental, I really don't have a problem with it. I don't. Sorry. I don't. I wouldn't care if they went and got a rental, you know, OBJ or or whoever. Someone that was a rental on the other side of the ball to improve the offense. And then next year, Roquan Smith moves on. Okay. That other player moves on. Okay, fine. You deal, you deal with each year on an individual basis, and yeah, not having the second-round pick is going to stink, but to me, the more talent you add like Roquan Smith gets you closer to being a legitimate Super Bowl team, and I think they're pretty close anyway. Yeah, so let me know what you think of my thoughts there at the end, and also what you think of my play breakdown, keeping in mind that the Bears clearly asked him to do multiple things in coverage, and I didn't show any of his blitzes because the... People wanted to see his coverage stuff. I showed some of his blitzes in the first video. Intentionally here, this was just coverage stuff. It's not about just interceptions. It's not about just passes defensed. As an inside linebacker doing your job, if you are doing your job, 
you're not you're going to get less opportunities at those things. And I said that for years before I started making YouTube videos. I said that to my kids. I said that to players. If you do your job, if you're sitting on the right on the proper leverage side, and the other inside linebacker or the outside linebacker, he's sitting on the correct leverage side. Ball's not going to be thrown to y'all. Ball's going to be thrown somewhere else. If it is thrown, then you got opportunity for a pick. Playing the correct leverage side oftentimes is going to dissuade the quarterback from throwing the ball there. That's what good coverage is. Good coverage isn't always interceptions. Like the first two plays I showed you, he wasn't in bad position, but those interceptions were not primarily a result of his coverage skills. It was a result of someone else doing their job in terms of tipping the ball up in the air. And that's why I think interceptions is a uh, somewhat faulty metric of whether you can cover or not. And I think Roquan Smith can. Let me know what you guys think of all of my thoughts in this video in the comments section. Appreciate you guys' time.